Welcome, everybody. Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Mahome University. Sunday coaching series. Tonight is how to pay contractors. We're going to get into a little bit more than that, just how to pay them, how to hire them, where to find them. You know, a lot of questions, they go hand in hand. And one thing about it is, you know, it does not matter if you ask a mobile home investor or a real estate investor. You know, what is one of the hardest uh, tasks that you have to do when you're investing properties, when you turn them into rentals, rent the owns, et cetera? Any minute contractors, ask them and they will tell you. Now, here's the thing, okay? Because we, we say that quite a bit and it's like, oh, it's such a headache to deal with the contractor, such a headache to deal with the handyman. You know, you may be the one triggering that event. It may be how you're doing your process from start to finish, maybe how you're hiring, how you pay for them. All that can, in sense, turn into a headache for you. Make sure you meet yourself, by the way, as you're coming in here. I'll do a couple here. There isn't as many people. I noticed I didn't shoot out a story either, so no reminder on that. But an email, Yasha, I got an email. So but uh, so it's a lot of hand in hand. But at the end of the day, yes, I mean, you know, you running a business. And I think a lot of you, when you're thinking about hiring a handyman, a contractor, okay, you don't have a business business in a sense. But if you're investing even in your very first mobile home and you're hiring a contractor, you're running a business. You have to act like a business. You have to carry yourself like a business and pay this individual, this quotations employee, like a business. And that's where a lot of things start getting dropped. Now, the contractor himself should be professional enough, but you know, you're going to go through at least 10 contractors before you find one that may quotations may be one you can take on it is not a rush job much like the previous call that we make you know you cannot rush these things you have to do a thorough in this case you're interviewing for a job that's what they're doing now if it's only one job that they will ever do for you well then that's fine that means you're only going to be inv investing on property but i when i hire contractors it's an ongoing thing now you know that is the unfortunate that things will happen you know i can say that over the years that I've been doing this, the one reasons that I have uh, contractors have left my side is, you know, until here recently, we did have an actual hiccup issue. They move out, they, they move out of state, they move away, they get an opportunity, or usually it's their spouses gets the job transfer or whatever it may be. And then therefore we get additional. But since we had a hiccup this past uh, probably about a month and a half, uh, two months now, you know, one thing that we did was reinforce backup after backup. You know, we just can't have this. It's always that one thing is you had an issue. You had some mistakes happen. You know, what did you learn from them? Because if you're just repeating the process again with the new contractor, you're probably setting yourself up for the same failure again. So, you know, and this time we've I, I, I personally have interviewed numerous contractors all, all over the state of Georgia at this time. And then of course, Tallahassee, Florida, we're working on. And then we have some investments that have carried on now into Bessemer, Alabama, which uh, we're starting this week. And I'm doing interviews over there as well. I've already got contractors, but I want more and more. And should this contractor flake even the slightest, you know, we're, we're real strict as to the way we're doing business at this time. So all I'm saying is at this point is you need to do the same. They don't tell you what they're going to do. They don't tell you how much they're going to get paid. You are in charge. Carry yourself that way. Well, they want me to pay them X amount right now and this and that. That's their system. And I can respect. And if they can't change into mine, then we're just not going to work together. You see what I'm saying? It's a relationship. Notice it's a relationship, not a friendship. One of the worst things that you can do is befriend a contractor. Nothing wrong with them. And here, let me toss this out there now before I keep going. There are very, very good handyman and contractors. I have worked with many for years, and I have nothing wrong to say about them. I wish they would do some jobs a little faster than they have, but I can deal with that. But that being said is one bad apple creates that name. So don't let that yeah. put you in a position where you yeah. feel like, okay, well, there's nobody I can hire. There's nobody that's going to actually do the work right, do it on time, get paid like they're supposed to, not run away, et cetera, et cetera. No, there is. You just have to find them. And again, it starts with you. You have to do the interview. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Okay. So I wanted to toss that absolutely, you know, because I do have some great contractors that, you know, there's nothing negative. And I don't say nothing negative about any of them, even the ones that do you wrong. You know, that happens, unfortunately. But uh, there is no contractors that are equal. You know what we say about investments, about a mobile home. No investments are the same. No mobile home is the same. <laughs> you know, so there's no contractor the same. You can have two contractors side by side and one may do something completely different from the other one. It doesn't mean right or wrong. It just means that's how they do it. To me, it's always as long as they get the job done, as long as they get the job done right on time and how they're supposed to be doing, you know, obviously checks out presentable and livable. 
I'm okay with it. I'm not there to micromanage them. If you have to micromanage your contractors, then again, it raises the question and concern. Should you be working with that person? I used to have this contractor crew. They were good. They, they were they were decent. I'll say that. Now, this was early in my starting career, as I guess we can say. Now, it seemed like every time I would show up, I would never ask, you know, let them know, text them, call them. Hey, I'm going to show up or whatever. I would just pop up and I wasn't doing it on purpose. I just kind of happened to be in the area and let me swing by and see how they're doing. Every time I got there, they were on break. They were either eating lunch, they were just shooting crap, whatever. But every time, it, it could be 10 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, 5 in the evening, they were all, always on break. And as soon as I got there, they got to work. So suddenly their break ended. But, you know, and these are things that you learn over the years. You know, it, I, I learned to put two and two together and just kind of, okay, this is things to watch out for kind of thing. So what I, you know, and when I coach you, of course, you know, these are the things that I try to eliminate from you having to deal with, but, you know, I don't micromanage my contractors, but I do check in every day. There's contractors I hire out of state. I, you know, I'm not going to go down there. I'm not going to see their work. I am going to rely on boots on the ground, maybe part management and them sending me videos, pictures. I may even do a zoom like I'm doing with y'all right now. Uh, hey, Mr. Contractor, let's get on a Zoom call here in about 30 minutes. Uh, show me some of these issues that you encounter. Show me the, some of this work that you're doing. I know you just resealed my roof, so let, let's check it out real quick kind of thing. A lot of things you can do, okay? But again, it's all about, you know, staying on top of that, taking it serious. We're not friends. This is a business and carrying it that way. Any questions, y'all make sure y'all put it on the chat. I think I saw a couple of them already, and I will get to all the above towards the end. So um, let's see. Well, okay. When you're interviewing a contractor, and we'll get you know into this here, but when you're interviewing a contractor, you know one thing that I I like to do is listen into them. You, you I can give you a script question by question, but you have to fill out the individual, and even then you may get done wrong. I mean, again, you know these are people that you're going to hire, and you have to, especially the new ones, stay on top of it. They have to show you the work. Is it checking out? Are they on time? What, what is the issue? Why are they behind? Why are this? Why are that? Ask questions, especially at the beginning, because you, you, you're learning them. They're learning you. They have to learn the system. And of course, you know, from early on, you have to have expectations and they have to meet them. If they don't do this, they don't do that. Maybe it's one of those kind of things where, OK, well, then maybe this is not the contractor for me. And that's where a lot of people. Well, that's the only contractor around. No, you don't know how to look for contractors. I have, I mean, I can post an ad on some of the social medias that you all can use, okay? Free social medias, and I am picking up contractor after contractor. You know, Albany alone, I have over 20 contractors available at any time I need them. Making over 50. Bessemer, Alabama, 10. I want more, okay? Tallahassee, so many I can't list. So, again, always. I don't wait until I have to have a contractor for me to say, oh, crap, now what? Now let me, because you're burning time. As soon as the contractor flakes out from, from this point on, it's one or two days, I got somebody and they're going. And that's the way it has to be. If one person cannot finish the job, somebody else has to take over. That's all there is to it. And there's no hard feelings but none of this. You know, with that contractor, they couldn't finish the job. Maybe, and I put a very light maybe on that, I will hire them again later on. OK, but the bottom line is that if I have a project, if I have something new, I need to move on. I cannot sit here and chase somebody down to get them to work. If they don't want to work, they're not going to work. As simple as that. OK, uh, contractors have to look out for you as much as they look out for them. You know, one thing about it, for sure, when I'm doing an interview, if I'm immediately hearing about money, this money, that pay this, pay that, that is a red flag all over that. At one point, I, I'm just, I don't even care to carry that conversation anymore. The interview is as good as over. So, you, you know, they will get paid and they need to know that contractors, too, have been done wrong. So keep that in mind. You know, you as an investor may say, well, you, this contractor did me wrong. They didn't do the job. They took the money. We'll have to go legally against them and follow them on that. But there's contractors that have come to me and say they have done this job for 10, 20K and never saw a penny. And they didn't know how to go about it. So they just kind of took the loss and went after it. So maybe that's why they may be pushing that subject of give me paid sooner kind of thing. But, you know, you just have to interview accordingly. I always say that they have to look out for me as much as they're looking out for them, their money, their pocket. OK. Uh, let me see. Mobile home experience, real estate, stick bill, commercial, all, all the above when it comes to real property can be very different from mobile homes. I'm not going to hire somebody who's never worked in a mobile home, period. That's not going to happen. 
So, you know, you have to have, to me, okay, every investor is different, but to me, if you don't have at least five years worth of experience and somehow with the mobile homes, I just, I, I don't care to deal with that. There's a lot of uh, trial and errors that I don't have time to spend on at this time, not to mention expenses. You know, when you hire somebody who all they focus is on apartments, uh, complexes, duplex and multi doors, et cetera, they have this mentality of more so like a contract of every piece of something. And it has to be luxurious to an extent or above and beyond. Mobile homes are affordability houses. Let's not forget that ever. It does not matter what exit strategy you have. They're mobile homes. They're affordable living. And that's what you have to provide. I'll make this example of many other videos that I, I talk about when I'm talking comps. And it's all about, you know, if you were to go into a subdivision, the properties are two, 250, 200, 250,000. Let me clarify that. Would you go in and remodel a house to say, okay, I know I'm going to put this on the market for 400 or 450. Well, that wouldn't work because there's no comps in that area that are going to happen that way. So you have to be within the standards of what's in the area. Well, the same way it works in a mobile home. In a mobile home park, if all the houses you know sold as is are selling for 20k after repair value, maybe two, three thousand as is, why would you come in there with an expectation of putting money over money over money or, or allowing a contractor to do so, knowing that you're not going to get more than what's there? It's going to be a beautiful home, yeah, but you're not going to get it. When I first started my third investment, that's the way it was. I had over ten thousand dollars just on material. You can imagine what it looked like. Oh, it was beautiful, no doubt. And I was proud of that property. The repair, the labor, I mean, I was so into that property, but I loved it. And I remember thinking that way, oh, this is the good one, whatever that means, okay? It didn't mean that because one, I didn't get the money back out of it, not the way I should have had. I ended up having to rent it longer than I needed to. And then not only that, but I remember early on, probably about the fifth or six months, they had a leak. And I remember the tenant calling me and, okay, that was, that was my pride, okay? So I had to go over there and check it out. When I got there, Wow. As soon as they opened the door, I mean, just the way and nothing against the tenant, but they had pets, which I don't know about. OK, they had dogs roaming around. These things look like horses. Cow, I mean, just crap smell in there. And the leak apparently wasn't a fresh leak. It was something that had happened early on. And they just, oh, it was behind the sink. We didn't really notice it, but we could hear it. Well, it was enough that they had done damage on the whole cabinet backside. It had done damage to the floor. And I guess once they realized that, you know, the floor was given on that backside, it was time to call me. Okay, that was a reality check for me. You cannot overexpand in rehabs. And it starts with your contractor. Your contractors do not dictate what you do to their property. You tell them that. This is what we're going to do, okay? And it doesn't matter. It, you know, it's not a disrespectful thing is you are in charge, okay? If you've been rehabbing mobile homes for 30 years and you've done it this way, well, you're working for me now. This is how we're going to do it, okay? We make them livable, presentable. We don't overexpend. The budget is set at a certain amount. Now, don't ever throw that number out there, okay? And a lot of contractors are going to test you early on. What are you looking to spend here? What do you think that means to you? If I was asking, what are you looking to spend here? I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to try to meet that number from both sides. One, if I'm looking out for you, well, let me see if I can do it for this amount, but you know this and that, and I'm going to notate things, but let's say a contractor is looking into your property and in natural, they're looking, okay, well, this is about a 3000 job, but you just told them that labor wise, you can spend up to 5k. Well, then they're going to do 5,000. So that's not the way to carry that either. Okay. Again, questions coming in. I would definitely get to them. Um, what we'll do towards the end. So I'm moving along here. So, all right. Working in a prop in a mobile home, definitely. That has to be a must. They have to have some type of um, experience within that. They have to have a team. I don't hire a one-man team. You know, if the property needs minimal work, maybe more so of a cleanup kind of touch up. Okay. I may go ahead and, you know, go on that with that one individual, but uh, they need to have a team. They need to have somebody who knows how to do electrical, somebody who knows how to do plumbing, flooring, walls, paint, et cetera. Every property may not need it, but I want to know that this team that I'm hiring because I'm putting the time into it, that's an investment in itself. I'm putting time into that one uh, contractor crew that I know that if, okay, if the next property we get does need plumbing work, it does need uh, electrical, well, then you got it covered, right? Yes, or they can get somebody. And those are some of the pre-questions that you're asking early on. What are, you know, every contractor has their specialties, as I call it. That means that out of all the duties that they can do, there's one of them that they can do better than the other ones. Oh, well, you know, if it comes to electric, I can definitely rewire the top property if you need it. That's not going to happen because we're not going to do that. But I'm glad to know that. 
or any plumbing that it needs. I can change anything around. We can move this, we can, and I'm going to test them by asking them certain questions. I don't like to keep water heaters on inside the mobile home. Now I notice there's room to put it underneath the home. You can do that, right? You can handle it. How will you handle that? And I'm listening in. And again, these are things that you will learn the more you're out there, the more questions that you're listening to. You're not micromanaging them, but if you can stop, if you can stop by your property, especially on your first investment, the more you pay attention, the more you're asking questions, the more that is going to help you later on within a second, third, fourth, or additional contractor, right? You know what you're talking about now. It doesn't take long for a contractor to realize they can't be me in a way. You know, if I take them to a property and I show them a bedroom and, hey, we need to fix these sections of the floor here, and they immediately start talking, well, we need to replace the entire floor, move the insulation here. Uh -uh. Here's what we're going to do. This corner is damaged. Now, past this corner, I see no damages. This is real lumber. It's been changed around. I can see the two by fours or two by sixes under. They're going to know they're talking to somebody who knows what they're talking about. So they cannot just carry on that. And you have to carry that on. We have uh, a few contractors now in the making area. Very, very good. But every project we give them, they try to up the price. And we got to bring them back to reality. Okay, this latest the price. And they're, they're good. They're doing really good. So I have nothing against that. But I noticed that they were trying to charge us almost as much for a single wide that we give them. Yes, it has uh, issues. It has to be rehab, no different than any other one. But suddenly it's almost as much as the double wide they're finishing up for us. It's not going to happen. Okay, and I want a breakdown. Why is it that you're charging me almost for this two bedroom, one bath as much as the three, two you just, you're almost done doing? Uh, 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 exactly. Okay, so how about this? Okay, this is what we have number. Now I'm tossing a number, but I know it, a solid number within fair. That's, you know, I'm not trying to get them to do for less than what it's, you know, fair, but it's not going to be as much as a double wide. It's not happening. So watch out on that, definitely. And, and again, it's a, it's a, relationship that you have to carry they have to be looking out for you and if they need more money for this or that that's understandable but you can only pay as much as what the market allows and uh, of course with the inflation of, of material you know the rehabs have gotten higher anyway that's not something we can do a whole lot of even with discounts and accounts here and all the above lumber is where it's at if you're paying attention to that it's hot uh pvc not so much better electrical but i don't want to get started over there either so all these things take into account um in an area if a contractor lives three four hours away from your job site they are going to try to get you to do a hotel a motel give me a room this and the above i always say hire locally every city county wherever you're working at i assure you there is contractors there's handyman and the same way you interview one city county they should do the same elsewhere i'm not going to pay hotel you know, if you want to take the job on and it's four or five hours away from you, you know, that's up to you. If you want to take the job, I'd be happy to. But we're not going to talk hotel. I need to stay here. need to stay there. So it would have to be a real specific job of some sort that I want this specific crew. I've had that before. There's a certain crew that, OK, I need this crew in here. I just I trust them. I know they're going to get it done quick. That would be something out of the ordinary. But on average, if you're going to start in an area, hire locally. OK, you do not send and I'm going to use George as an example, somebody from Atlanta down to Valdosta or be prepared to pay more, at least for their duty. And again, keep in mind, you, they have to be paid accordingly as well. So, you know, one of those kind of things. Uh, license insured, that's huge. They either have to be or they have to sign waivers. Basically, they can't sue you. I'll shorten that as, as short as I can. I am not an attorney. I cannot give you legal advice. Any and all information that I give you is for educational purposes only. So, you know, ask me more in direct for that question and I'll send you to the right people that can answer. But license and insurance is obviously something that you have to keep in mind because they have to have all around. Now you for the property, you need to have insurance anyway. Send me a question on that as well if you need, okay? How soon can you start? That couldn't be the biggest red flag for me uh, on everything. You know, as much as that may sound like a great thing, how soon can you start, Mr. Contractor? Right now, I have no other work. Well, that's a red flag, and it's not a good one, okay? Obviously, as much as I want them to be ready right now, a good contractor handyman is always busy. They're always busy. You almost have to go take them off another another <laughs> investment. So they're working on somebody else's, you know, to come and work on yours for you to carry them on. 
Um, and always keep them busy, you know, because they can do the same thing to you. If, if you're delaying them or if you have a week off or you have nothing for them, they're going to go find a job somewhere else. And if it's another investor like myself that can keep them busy, they don't really have a reason to go back to you or they don't have the time better yet. So but, you know, I want somebody that's always busy. And if they just finished a couple of jobs, it could have been then OK. But if they're available, usually it means that's the reason why. OK, there's a reason behind why they're, they don't have any work at this time. So. Any questions? Let me let me go in and start answering some questions on here. I'm gonna save I'm gonna save that question probably that came in towards the end, so I'll answer that. Um, what well, is almost eight thirty? How do you interview contractors long distance? I do it all the time. You know, I've interviewed many, many. Tallahassee is my little bragging right kind of city because I yet to be there. I'm not gonna go down there. Um. And I have hired handyman contractors. I've even hired uh, electricians because that's all I needed in one property, just a few electrical issues. And then even housekeepers that come in and just clean them up. So you can do it. You know, use social media. It is the biggest form of advertising for us mobile home investors. I tell people, you know, treat the Facebook marketplace almost like uh, real estate. We treat Zillow truly a realtor, et cetera. Um, I, I find any and everything on Facebook Marketplace. I start by finding contractors by putting ads out there. Um, anybody looking for work or I have mobile homes and I need rehab, anybody available and just start creating a list and then just go down the line. It can all be done remotely and it's actually something that all of you should be working on at one point. Imagine if every time you have a, a property or a contractor you want to update on, you're having to run to the property. You're not going to be very efficient with your time because at one point you're spending too much time behind a wheel driving and not enough time looking for deals or your next investment. I only drive the properties when I have X amount of them. Like on Tuesdays, that's my out in the field day. Most of y'all know that. That's when I spend time to go out and check on the current properties we have, whether we're rehabbing or a new park or, or we're networking and about to get a lot of properties. But I'm talking 10, 15 minimum. If it's anything less than that, we're going to rely on pictures, we're going to rely on phone calls, Zoom calls, whatever we need to. But, uh, you know, that saves us time and it just gets the job done productive. So that's how we would do that. Just hire them over the phone. And like this, I may do a Zoom, you know, with one of them. Get on the Zoom and let's talk, you know, let, let's interview you real quick. So any other questions, list them on there. I'm trying to see if anything else I have not covered. You know, these, I'm getting a little bit of feedback what the, uh, from these calls and I like it definitely more questions are coming in which is why I'm I'm able to put these you know calls together as I am and a lot of these I'm just kind of answering them for all y'all as I'm covering the topic but what insurance do you recommend for mobile homes uh interesting question so any other time I would say national real estate insurance but and Wally you sent that to everybody so I'm going to call your name on that Wally Wait till next week. I have next call is going to be on an insurance. Some of you know that I, I was a guest speaker at the George Point uh, RIA and they brought me in. They wanted me to talk mobile homes. Got a lot of interest. Uh, probably a lot of people that want to be a coach on that. But uh, one of the people that I met there is actually a mobile home um, insurance agent. So go figure on that. So we're going to have her on the call next uh, next Sunday. We're going to have her on there. We're going to be talking why you need insurance, what kind of policies you can get, what kind of policies during rehab, and then what kind of policies maybe after when you've already sold it, because that mobile home has to have insurance no matter what. That's not an, that's, there's no excuses to that. Okay, things happen, life happens, and uh, sure, you'll be thankful. And it's not a whole lot that they charge for insurance on them, so it's not even an excuse. But we'll have her. She's local. She's actually north of Atlanta. So, you know, we're better to go. National uh, real estate insurance, that's still good. Now, I'm nothing against them. I just, you know, I connected with somebody locally. And of course, we want to give her business and we wanted to come have her come and talk on that as well. So, any other questions? Okay, back on feedback I was getting. So, good calls. You know, we've had this for probably three months now, every Sunday. Um, we're going to be changing some things around. So some, some changes are coming on to that. We've had some people talking. I don't know how many more of these will carry on the same way that they're going, but at one point this will become part of more, more like a GMHU membership. Maybe we're still talking in the works on that. So now if you're already a student of GMHU, a current student, you know, that's not something you have to worry about. You just carry on. These calls are available. So we're putting a few things together. We want to make these calls maybe a little bit longer to answer this 30 minute on this contractor. This is only touch and service. I have yet to talk about how long should each uh, rehab take. That's also huge. I can tell you this. 
two weeks. If the mobile home has to be gutted, three weeks. Anybody who's, any contractors who's rehabbing your property that needed minimal or just touch up, maybe a few fixtures from floors, wall, ceiling, roof, two weeks. That, that, that's it. And I can break that down a lot more for sections on the floors to the walls punched in to the ceiling resealed along with prices. How much should each job take? Okay. So, I mean, you, this is why I want to extend these calls to be able to really answer a lot more of these questions. Uh, where do you find contractors? I'll kind of answer on that, but how do you actually list for them? How do you get their contacts? How do you interview them? Okay. All this is a structure again, that takes, it takes time. That is the biggest investment, you know, that you're going to do not so much hiring them, but taking time to actually interview them, calling their referrals. I want numbers. I want to see some of your previous work. What they tell me and what they actually do can be two different things. I want to know about it and I'm going to call people and I'm going to find out. Okay. So before I even let them step foot into my property to give me a quote, I got more information about them than they know. Okay. And that's just all part of pre-screening. Uh, a lot more questions I can go with that, but yeah, stay tuned for that. And then um, the shadow, I was talking about this before recording. I don't know how many people have joined. I will have two contractors at the next shadow event, August 21st. A lot of these questions that you can put from now to then, or you want to ask maybe some of the issues you've been running with your contractors, you can bring them on there. You can ask them, okay, that will be there live with me by my side as we're doing the shadow event. I don't know exactly where, but we will let you all know if you want to sign up, you know, it's always 99 before it gets listed. Once it gets listed, it may be 197 and we may go up. I'm not sure, but uh, definitely a lot of questions can be answered on that. So let me see what other announcements I have for y'all. Of course, the second Saturday, every Every third Saturday of the month moving forward, that's where it's going to be the shadow event. I don't know how many more I will be doing. At one point, I will be taking a coach under my under me, and he or she will be doing the shadow events. They may even be doing this calls here at this point because there's so many other things I need to be focusing as well that I cannot continue to make them these, these directly. But I'm going to stick around as much as I can to be directly. I love this. This is my passion. Overall, exit strategies, I will say the coaching is the one I like the most. So this is why I do it. And I don't charge out for it. So, you know, I like it. <laughs> but second Saturday, this one definitely is not going to last for, for long. Uh, I took it all more like a favor, which was the second Saturday of every month. And it's a, a meet that we hold down in Atlanta. We may shift it around, move it somewhere else. It's a free one and a half, two hour meets where all we do is network. I was trying to structure to maybe a topic as well, things I can help you out with. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of feedback on that. If y'all don't follow me on Meetup yet, Meetup, we put all the all, all these events on there as well. So definitely go check that out. Uh, Meetup, uh, I think there's an app for that as well. But uh, that one there, uh, we're either going to start holding it on Zoom. We're going to hold it at a different location every month to try to kind of, you know, I know a lot of people travel a good ways for that. So we'll try to accommodate to everybody. But uh, I don't know how many of those I will be able to hold. So I'm not going anywhere. But I will be behind the scenes a bit more and have direct coaches. So just kind of giving you a heads up on that. Okay. I don't see any other questions on here on the actual um, topic that we covered tonight, which was how to pay contractors. I know a lot of you may still have a lot of questions and I'd love to help you. Uh, send me an email directly at jackgarciamhu.com. I can coach you directly on that. And of course, if you take my coaching, I will reach out to your contractors, period. And there's certain things that will change immediately. That's the way we work or they will be replaced. So, you know, don't hesitate. Don't deal with contractors longer than you need to. That was a flaw of mine when I was getting started. I would deal with your nonsense. I mean, I would go with contractors who would be absent for a week. Nobody's sick that long. This, this was just, you know, they get other jobs. I wasn't as important. I wasn't a priority. And I just kind of, okay, well, maybe they'll come back today. Maybe. Uh, that's not business. Business does not relay on guests, maybe or possibly. So, okay, I, I love to help you, but reach out to me. That's going to conclude the call here. Uh, Instagram, thank you for joining. Y'all know how to reach out to me. Visit GarciaMHU.com for coaching. Until next time, thank you for watching.